So what we have here is the tunnel, the pier, the boat, and the chicken nandas. <laughs> That's going to be our intro. <laughs> Here we are in sunny Greenwich testing some lenses. Yeah, we've got the 18 to 140 DX on the ZSC. I've got 24 to 200 on Z6. So both of those lenses give you very similar focal distance, but on different sensor size cameras. We are going to pretend to be tourists for the day. Hopefully get some good shots. Let's do that. <laughs> Try not to freeze. So from here, yeah, I've got 24 mil. Yeah. I can see the whole boat. Yeah. With this bottom bit that is under. But can you fit Sam in as well? Yes, I have a, a bit of his face in a frame, which I will remove with the magical Photoshop. <laughs> can I take a picture of that fountain? Sure. how quickly we can go and also how shallow depth of field can be. So I'm just going to zoom in all the way to 200. But then then you want to be closer? No, because I'm zooming in at 200. I think it will work better in vertical. <laughs> That's my default. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it is. Do you think if it's your default, then maybe the battery pack would help you? No. I like to stretch my arm awkwardly like that. Speaking of the grips, what we have here is actually, I've got an L-plate for my Z6, which is quite useful, and this one is made by Small Rig. And you have? I have the Nikon ZFC GR1, which is the grip for that. It's not an L-plate, it doesn't have a quick release function on it, but I'm starting to find it kind of essential with mm. the ZFC. So do you find to, do you like to have the grip on the camera? I do. I didn't think I missed it going from the Z50 to the ZFC, but actually having it on today, I noticed that I'm much more comfortable carrying the camera like that. So yeah, I think if you go for a ZFC, it's essential. All right, but then my question is, well, why wouldn't you go for Z50 then? Because it, that one has a built-in. It's true, but the Z50 doesn't have all that beautiful retro styling, does it? Absolutely, it doesn't look as pretty. It doesn't look as pretty, nor does it um, have the better autofocus and the slightly better processing power. So That's true, and the fancy knobs as well that you can use. I love the knobs and dials. That's true. where the Meridian thing is, isn't it? That tower yes, on the yeah, hill. the GMT. The oh. famous GMT. Should we go there? The Great Meridian Time. Is that what it stands for? Greenwich Mean Time. Is ah, it's Greenwich Mean Time. <laughs> you didn't know what GMT stood for? No, but I know what BSC stands for. <laughs> British it's, Summertime. No, it's Korean uh, boy band. <laughs> it's BTS, right? Oh, that's BTS, yeah. <laughs> you know, I know my stuff. All right, what we're going to do is a simple test. We're going to take a wide angle shot now, mm. see what we can fit. And with them, we also will get a shot zoomed in at the tower over there. Okay. And see if it's any different. Technically, it shouldn't because one point is about 200 on your camera. Yeah, not quite, is it? Well, we'll find out. Okay. Okay, so test number one. And then we're going to zoom in. Here we go. Test number two. Let's find out. I mean, I'm way underexposed, but it's fine. So it's about the same. It is, it is about the same. And then, yeah, I'm just a little you bit You get a little bit more. Not bad. It's funny how much of a difference those few millimeters make. I know. And if you travel, actually, you will notice this. If you're shooting with both lenses, but actually, if you would just have this lens, you with wouldn't even notice. No, I wouldn't even know. I'm finding it really versatile, actually. Absolutely. And then, if you compare the sizes, 
Okay, here's my setup. Z6 with 24200. So it's a little bit bigger, but actually it does feel bigger. And then the camera is a little bigger as well. So overall, as a city crawler, you know, a day tripper, that would be a setup I personally would go for. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, 16 to 50 is a lovely little lens because it's so small. Mm -hmm. But actually, this gives you so much more. Exactly. And I would forego the 50 to 250, 1650 combination for this any day. Absolutely, I think it's actually become better than the Yeah. Okay, so yeah. And I also go a little bit underexposed just to get those shadows very, very short, almost black. Clever, clever. And then, whoa. I'd like some Kodak T Max right about now. <laughs> Look at that. Let's just see. Hold on, sorry, I missed it. <gasps> Lovely. Gorgeous. I Did you get like, it? Uh, I've just captured the decisive moment <laughs> of my own creation. Amazing. I We are in England and there is snow. <laughs> Impressive. The only snow in London. Yeah, literally. Now, the interesting thing, I'm not really using long focal distances for my day-to-day -day stuff. But with this lens, I tend to zoom in a little bit more because it compresses the environment a little bit. Yeah, suddenly having a slightly longer focal length, I think, oof, couldn't live without that. <laughs> and then I can also blur the front end. So if I I focus on infinity over there, yeah. so those lumps are a little bit blurred. Yeah. Ideally, of course, if I would have 2.8 lens, it would be better, but even with 6.3, it still gives you the front subject out of focus. Yeah, it's true. And actually, I like what you've done there. This view right here. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. All right, you know what I want to do? Tell me. I want to put the 24-200 on the ZFC. Of course you want to put the 24 on the ZFC. <laughs> Everything goes on ZFC. Everything goes on a DX. So before it used to be Z50, mm -hmm. and now it's ZFC. Mm -hmm. Or we can swap the cameras, how about that? We can do that too. But I don't want to. But I don't want to, no, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine, we can swap cameras. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the beauty of swapping the cameras and the peak design is those little anchors yeah. are quite easy to swap. So just remove this, I give the thing to Becky, and here we go. You know what? what? I thought this setup is not going to work. I thought that 18 to 140 is too big for this camera. But actually, on the camera, it looks pretty reasonable. It feels much lighter than your setup right now, which is actually mine. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised. This is a very, very reasonably compact setup for travel. Do you think it's helped by the grip? I think so. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It does feel more natural. Yeah. And I think overall, especially for street photography, people don't react to this camera as much as this one. With this one, people know that you have something big pointing at them. Well, with this one, they think, oh, it looks kind of like a film camera, you know, so <laughs> I'm fine then, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's quite discreet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of this filming, yeah, of this shoot, I thought that's not going to work. I am pleasantly surprised. And it doesn't happen, happen very often. Really. No. 
He doesn't like to be wrong. No. <laughs> I'm never wrong. I just change my mind on things. Yeah. I like the rendering of the 200. It's funny, it looks three-dimensional, but I wouldn't think of 24 200 as a three-dimensional lens. No. No, it's very interesting. I think having that long, long range really helps. As you say, when you were shooting those architectural shots, it's like it compresses everything and makes it look kind of 3D-like. It gives it this extra dynamic. I have found this quite heavy. Mm -hmm. From a personal point of view, I would still stick with my Z6 24 to 70 for most things mm -hmm. because I don't think that I'm going to use well, that. Well, I wonder moment. if it's L-plate that makes it feel even heavier. It's true. So if you remove that, that could be quite good. Then yeah. it might make it a bit lighter. Yeah, let's try that. But as a DX travel setup, I'm really loving that combination. Yeah, you're convinced? Yeah. How have you found that? I mean, it's plastic mount. It's obviously a cheaper lens, generally speaking. But, you know, the plastic mount is something that, yes, I can definitely agree on. I prefer metal mount and the 24 to 120 has one. Overall, the optical quality is so good mm. that plastic mount can't take away of the benefits of this lens. And because it's so light, it's actually a reasonable setup. I think, as I say, as a day-to-day -day camera, as a kind of take-on-the-wall camera, it's really good. Yeah. With this setup, I agree, it's something that I wouldn't take with me at all times. I would probably prefer 24 to 70 for that because it definitely feels lighter than 24 to 200. Mm. But at the same time, if you buy the lens right now, then I would go with 24 to 200 because it's just a little bit heavier, but then you get so much more with it. And optically, it's very close. Yeah. I mean, if you compare the size of the 24 to 70 and the size of the 24 to 200, and then look at how much more focal length you get, you get more bang for your buck, basically. And they're pretty much not out of kit, not including the kit variants. They're almost the same price. Let's talk about the aperture. So you've got f4 to 6.3 mm -hmm. on 24 to 200, and we've got 3.5 to 6.3 on 18 to 140. A lot of people thought that those lenses should be 5.6 on the longer end. Mm. Do you think it take away much from that? It doesn't make that much difference in practical terms. I, I don't think it's a problem to have 6.3 as the smallest aperture, and it, it makes it smaller. It means that the mm -hmm. lenses can be smaller and lighter. I agree with you. And in terms of focal distances, I mean, 18 to 140, yes, while we were shooting, we thought the 24 was a little bit wider than 18 because 18 is equivalent of 27. Yeah. I think if you wouldn't have that comparison on site, you could easily walk back two meters and take literally the same shot. Exactly. And to be honest with you, the 24, it does distort quite a bit, so it will require a lot of compression. So just zoomed in at 28 would fix that issue for me. Yeah, exactly. At the end of the day, if you're a DX user or full frame user, you can't go wrong with any of those lenses. They're not designed for ultimate image quality. There are prime lenses or 2.8 zooms that are designed for that, which are a lot more heavy, a lot more expensive as well. But as a stroll around the town lens, travel lens, something that you just want to get one camera and one lens, nothing else in your backpack, you can't go wrong with any of those. And the choice is really there is, if you're a DX user, you're going to get 18 to 140. And if you're a full frame user, you're going to go for 24 to 200. Yeah, I agree. Thank you very much for watching. Please give us a like and a subscribe and let us know if you'd like us to do any more out and about trips and what you'd like us to review next.